Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bell to Bells, your women's wrestling wire. I'm Mr. Warren Hayes. Thank you very much for joining us today on our YouTube channel. And we're not alone because you're joining us, but also someone else who's joining me today, a, a someone who will be challenging Taya Valkyrie for the AAA Rena de Renas title at Impact Under Siege Live Saturday, May 7th. And that person is right here, the virtuosa. Diana Perazzo. Diana, it's nice to see you again. Welcome back to Belt to Bells. Thanks for having me. So, Diana, uh, since the last time we spoke, there's been a lot of chaos, a lot of things that happened to you, uh, you know, specifically at Rebellion, where you unfortunately lost the Reina de Renas titles. I, you know, I don't want to twist the knife here. You know, we're just stating facts here. You lost it to Taya Valkyrie. Uh, what was your initial reaction when Taya reclaimed the title? Oh, you know what? It, it, been here, done this, right? Lost championships, won them back. Um, so, you know, I it's I have an opportunity to win it back. That's what I'm focused on. Um, under Siege next weekend, May 7th. Um, I'm going to get my championship back. And I'm going to be a three-time champ champ. Well, there you go. Uh, it, Taya, you know, she, she said she claims that she never lost the title, right? She, that she simply vacated it and that she's, she just came back for what was hers, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Give me some thoughts on that. <laughs> uh, you, if you vacated the championship, you are giving it up. Therefore, it is not yours anymore. I saw a fun fact, and I don't know this to be true or not, that I am tied for like the most title defenses in a Reina de Reina's um, championship reign. Okay. I don't know that to be true or false. However, if it is true and she's supposed to be a four time champion, why did she not defend her championship as much as I did? Just to well, tell uh, uh, well, look, I, 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 I'm, look, I'm in complete agreement. Like if you give something up, right, you're, you're basically, you're relinquishing it. You're giving it up. It's, it's no longer yours. You know, if well, I, you know, if I give, if I give my car to someone, I don't know why I do it, but you know, it's no longer my car, right? But and you can't say, I, I just gave it up. It's not mine. It, it, you know, it was still mine. No, it's someone else's now. No, it was Fabby's and then it became mine. There you go. And uh, and you held it for like almost three, uh, for over 250 days, right? Something like 252, if I believe. Oh, okay. So, you know, so you probably... <laughs> Uh, you know, I defended it like four times, five times uh, on television and on independent shows. It wasn't just like a, you know, fluke. I just didn't hold it. It wasn't I just jewelry. It. Yes. It wasn't just an accessory. You had, <laughs> you put it out there. More than that. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, and uh, and on May 7th, like you mentioned, you do have uh, your rematch with, uh, with Taya at Under Siege. Um, look. There, there's a whole bunch of thoughts I'd like to get here, but first and foremost, maybe, you know, uh, there's this thing with Rosemary who's, you know, who's been hovering around, let's put it that way. Is that a concern yeah. to you going into this match? No. Um, I've defeated Rosemary twice. Uh, twice, uh, twice, I believe, maybe more than that, but twice, one-on-one -on -one for the Knockouts Championship. I defeated her. So um, I defeated her a third time in the homecoming tournament to win king and queen of Impact Wrestling. So I think she's, if I could steal um, some verbiage from Tasha Steeles, I think she's a non-factor. Uh, a non-factor, okay. So, well, that that's absolutely, I, look. She's a non-factor. <laughs> that wor that works for me. That that works for me absolutely. Um, you um, so look. You said it yourself. You know the, the we're you know you're a champ champ. You're you know you you've always been a champ champ, and you still are a champ champ right now. Not afraid to defend Mind your titles. It's a mindset. Yeah, it's a mindset. <laughs> and last year, right? You know, at some point, you held three titles at on different occasions, right? The knockouts title over an impact, of course. The AAA title. And the Ring of Honor World, uh, Women's World, right? Uh, and this one, this 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 last one, uh, it, you know, you you never really lost it. But we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, is it your goal to reclaim, like, to get back on top of the world, hold on all to all these titles, and really be like the dominant force that you were throughout, you know, the pandemic, essentially? 
Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, but I think that as as interesting as it would to to rest, be to wrestle Tasha Steeles for the Knockouts World Championship, um, I think I want to say, set my sights on maybe the Knockouts World Tag Team Championships here at Impact. Um, okay. We have a media championship that maybe I'd love to hold that too. So I think that there's still a lot for me to do at Impact besides just being the Knockouts Champion, besides... Um, you know, being the champ champ, I still have so much left to do and so much I have to give. Um, but I just need to find myself a tag partner, I think. Well, okay. Uh, have, have you started scouting tag team partners? Well, okay. If we're being honest, there's only one person who, who's fit for that job and that's Chelsea Green. Okay. There you go. (laughs) So, so, so there you go. But uh, and 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 you know, uh, it, it's something that you guys have worked on in the past as well. So you know, it'd be. I think a lot of people would be excited for that. You know, working with your friend—that's a whole other different. It's a whole different mindset then, right? Absolutely. And you know what's funny is like VXT was never a real thing. It was like um, you know I don't want to say it was like a social media movement because that it, it wasn't that big, but it was like. We had just been doing stuff on our own, like photo shoots and whatever outside of NXT just to like have content and things to post because we weren't wrestling and we weren't being featured on TV. So we were like, how do we stay relevant? Okay, let's, you know, use this photographer, do something like this. Um, And then we started VXT and it was with Rachel Elring. It was Rachel's idea. Um, And I think that Rachel unfortunately got hurt. And because Chelsea and I were already doing some of these things on our own to market ourselves, VXT kind of just got tied into that. Um, Not on purpose. That's just kind of how it worked out. And then people wanted to see VXT. And because of the support we had online, um, I think that NXT creative kind of saw it and was like, okay, maybe there is something here. Let's try to explore it. And we explored it. And then I wasn't ready for TV, right? But um, well, there's a lot that Chelsea and I still talk about that we'd love to do in, in terms of gear and tag moves and things like that that have just now gone um, un- underutilized because we haven't been a team. So I think that, you know, we are best friends. Uh, we spend every single day together, most days during the week. Um, we work out together. We, you know, take our dogs to the park together. We do everything together. Um, so there's that dynamic. But then also too, there's the dynamic of like, she's this hot mess. She's crazy. She's, you can't anticipate what her movements are. Um, you know, she could do the high flying stuff. She could do the the quick agile stuff. And then you have me who's the technical base. I could do a little bit more of like maybe the powerhouse stuff. We are the yin to each other's yang. I think when it comes to the wrestling ring. So it'll be interesting if and when there's an opportunity to see for real what that dynamic is because no one's seen it yet. Well, uh, look, you look, the hell of a pitch. I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all, all that was missing is for you to start pulling out like, you know, the s- sketches of the gear that you guys have planned and I'd be, you know, where, take my money. Here's my credit card. Um, <laughs> <laughs> before we get to uh, to the uh, to the big event, to the to the uh, AAA title this uh, ne- on May 7th, on Wednesday, you're going to be doing your AEW debut, stepping into yes. a ring with Mercedes Martinez to um, unify the Ring of Honor World Women's title because Mercedes Martinez at Supercard of Honor won the uh, uh, the interim title. Um, yeah. Now, you fought Mercedes before. But the context here is very different. Tell me uh, what's going through your mind here. Um, you know, I think I've did poke poked a little bit of fun about, you know, how um, an interim title is ridiculous and I'm the reigning and defending the real Ring of Honor Women's World Champion. But I think that um, at Supercard of Honor, because I unfortunately, you know, couldn't be there, I was already scheduled to wrestle at Impact that same night. Um, The logistics just didn't work out and um, I had to, you know, I'm contracted to Impact. So that had to be my first priority. But sure. uh, you know, I think that Tony crowning an interim champion was really um, essential to defining this new era of Ring of Honor and what it's going to be. Um, and the Ring of Honor Women's 
world championship is is so special to me so the fact that um it was showcased it was put on this new platform for you know an old fan base and a new fan base to become aware of we do have a women's division i mean i can you can never discredit mercedes martinez for what she's done and um the legacy that she's built for herself so i think you know the interim title is in good hands however i am the real reigning and defending ring of honor women's world champion and i plan to keep it that way wednesday yeah, you know, the, the in some of the conversations that we had uh, uh, on, on previous occasions, we we talked about the you know this forbidden door, right? And you had mentioned yeah. uh, you know you had mentioned to me you know that you were looking forward to more opportunities for for women, especially from Impact, you know, to to do the crossover stuff. Uh, you've been all over the place, and now do you feel like dynamite uh, dynamite uh, AEW right on dynamite? Uh, do you think that it's it's sort of like the closing up this this forbidden door scenario for you because you'll you'll basically have wrestled everywhere, right? <laughs> yeah, it seems that way. Um, I don't. The last few years have been wild. Um, I think it closes that door in terms of like, and and I don't know. I can't say this with certainty that um, who else has done this, but like in the last, you know, whether it's year or 18 months, like I've wrestled for obviously impact wrestling. I've wrestled for ring of honor. I've wrestled for NWA. I've wrestled for AAA. The only thing that eluded me is, is wrestling for AEW. So um, I think it is kind of like a, like a closing of like, I've done it all. And this is great. Um, I've stepped through the forbidden door, but I will say that I was doing the forbidden door thing way before it was cool to do the forbidden door thing. Um, so I'm glad I'm taking that, that title back. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited because AEW for me wasn't necessarily always a possibility. And if we think back to 2018, um, the precursor to AEW was all in and I was supposed to be a part of all in. And then I ended up pulling out of all in so i could go to wwe um and so it's it's really become full circle and it That's really interesting. made me super emotional that it's like finally happening and you know we i had talked about it with scott Demore this entire time since the forbidden door became a thing of how do we get women incorporated into this and and is it me and brit how do we do you know a, a tournament how do we do whatever um you know AEW had their um their uh, cash in, um, and it was like a woman's battle royal. And I was yes, like, how yes, do we yes. get act into that? Like, you know, I was very vocal about I want women to be a part of this, and by any means necessary, let's do it. And it just didn't work out yet. So, um, to be the kind of the figurehead leading leading the charge for women to now be a part of it is really special and important to me to go out there Wednesday wave the impact banner all over AEW, put our best foot forward, um, and then walk away still the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion. Oh, there you go. So that, I, I find it interesting. I hadn't even thought about the whole full circle thing. Uh, and I know there's there's uh, there's a, a, a large amount of fans who are uh, looking forward or excited at the prospect of more women crossing the crossing the threshold. So we're very excited for you, Diana. We're also excited for the uh, for the uh, big pay per view uh, event. I don't know if it's a pay per view. I don't know if I'm using the per the correct it terminology. Is. It is a pay per view. Uh, okay, pay per view special. Pay per view special. There you go. Uh, which is uh, which is of course under siege. Impact under siege. Saturday, May seven against Taya Valkyrie. We're looking forward to that as well. And uh, we wish you the best of luck, Diana. Although, you know, you don't need luck. You just play with your Ooh. food, basically, when you get in the rings. <laughs> I need some luck to get some sleep over the next few days uh, so I can be prepared for all of this. That's what I need luck on. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, good luck to you then. Hopefully you get some good rest. Thank you very much for joining us, Diana. It was a pleasure. <laughs> And thank you, everyone, for joining us as well. Like, subscribe. Y'all know the drill. I'm not going to run you through it. I'm Mr. Warren Hayes, and we'll see you next time.